Chantilly High School strives to prepare all students to be productive members of an increasingly complex society and provides them with learning activities that reflect personal, academic, and professional relevance. To that end, Chantilly provides a full-service education, one that incorporates the widest range of academic offerings and extracurricular activities, as you'll find out in this edition of Profile. I think what's exciting about Chantilly High School as a concept is that it's taking the the average community-based high school and we've tried to equip it with the right kinds of programs to meet current needs and future needs as we understand them, as we've researched, as we've had feedback within our community and our business community and uh, try to match that up as opportunities for kids, not mandates, but opportunities for kids to be involved. Within the school, uh, there are uh, several centers. There is a regular, comprehensive 9 through 12 high school that services the needs of uh, roughly 2,500 students that are in the Chantilly area here, a very quickly growing um, residential area, along with a lot of businesses that have begun to be located at this end of the county. That is a comprehensive high school that offers college preparatory, uh, business, uh, future military op occupations, uh, general transition to work. Then we have also co-located with us an uh, emotionally disabled center, about 115 students servicing mostly um, this western edge of the county in students that have an, an, an emotional disability at this time that they're currently working through as prescribed and described through special education. And then finally, we also have a professional technical center, the largest in the county, with around 820 students, about 240 of which are Chantilly-based. The remaining almost 600 come from other high schools and centers around the county that are in the career academy process. The school, which opened in the mid-70s, has been recently renovated. A focal point of the architecture and of the strong academic program as well is the Library Media Center, which is available to all students on campus. The Chantilly Library Media Center houses 20,000 uh, books and we subscribe to approximately 40 uh, magazines. And that is in addition to what we have available in the computer room on CD-ROM and of course the internet. Uh, the students uh, use the library before school, after school, uh, we can house three classes at a time doing research. The teachers sign up to use the library and we can accommodate three classes as long as the assignments don't overlap. This full service school does not settle for mediocrity. Chantilly is committed to a high standard of excellence. At the core of this goal is a strong basic academic program in the arts and sciences. The nucleolus, that's what it is. Because that's, I didn't feel like making meatballs last night for you. Wait a second. Well, I can cut that and make, uh, that and make silly and also make uh, lysosomes with that, I guess. Or even make a nucleus, but it depends on how I cut it. Uh -huh. yeah. okay. This is human anatomy and physiology, and what we're doing right now is I'm making cell pieces, which we use cheese and other type of ingredients to represent cell parts of parts of the cell. In a couple of the groups were using uh, tomatoes as a nucleus or even malted milk balls as part of the nucleolus and uh, using, I guess, uh, sausage or pepperoni, other type of things to make um, Golgi apparatus and uh, ribosomes and lysosomes and other endoplasmic reticulums and everything like that. Okay, that about Two. Oh. All right, five minutes. It was sweeter. Whoa. And there was a lot of saliva. Yeah. This is biology, and uh, this experiment is for it's to see how f foods are chemically and uh, mechanically digested in the body. And we use bile salt, pepsin, and hydrochloric acid to help test this. Three test tubes on top. So like it'd be like a picture of mountains rolled mm -hmm. around the cone mm -hmm. kind of thing. 
I need to have it over there too, so you have two areas of interest. Okay, I wasn't sure. If but I like that. But I like that too. We're doing an architectural design, and we went out in the hallway and we um, picked a perspective. We drew it, and then now what we're doing is we're putting it on a bigger scale with charcoal. This particular class actually is a combination of Art 3, Portfolio Prep Development, and AP students. Uh, they're juniors and seniors with a couple of exceptions. And basically it's the most advanced level course here at Chantilly High School and within the county also. Um, they predominantly do fine arts work such as two-dimensional pieces in drawing, painting, printmaking, and three-dimensional pieces in sculpture, ceramics especially in the frame, you know, so it comes off more like the frame. You may want to pick up highlights and maybe ridges in it. I am a local branch manager with Central Fidelity Bank, the sponsor of the Virginia High School League uh, Academic Awards. And for the second year in a row, Chantilly High School has won in the state of Virginia the AAA Academic Award uh, for the whole state. Uh, the Central Fidelity Cup is a, a program through Central Fidelity Bank and the Virginia High School League. The Virginia High School League governs all athletics and those extracurricular activities in the drama, debate, forensics, journalism, photojournalism areas. Um, and that is a cup program that they started a couple of years back where you accumulated points depending on how your program did in district, regional, and state competition in each of those areas. And it's essentially an academic excellence award that states that those programs seem to be achieving well. It's a, a tribute, really, to the faculty and the students that are involved in that phase of the extracurricular program here. These are so out of look, I mean, just look at the expression. The underclass section of all the sections are, is the largest section. So we, we have a lot of layouts to do. We have uh, 38 layouts, which equals 38 stories to uh, hand out different ideas for each story, hand out to the uh, writing, each writer that we have. And uh, the layouts are, take time to uh, create each one to make them different, not repetitive throughout the yearbook. Did you already do the caption for? Yeah. Okay. Just like reprinting? Yeah. Make sure you filter them out. Yeah, no. Get that corner. Uh, I'm photo editor of um, the Odyssey, our Chantilly's yearbook, and uh, I'm responsible for uh, cropping and choosing all the pictures um, that go in the yearbook and assigning our uh, student photographers um, their stories. Why do you need to number them? Because how do you know which one's which? Because that's Mike, and that's Shane, and that's somebody yeah, else's there. I mean, how, <laughs> how, would how would Tony know? Because Tony knows this is Mike, and that's Eric, all right, and that's, that's Shane. Cool. All right, I got it. So, bring it up. And we Awesome. How do I do that on every? Is it pretty easy to do? Like, yeah, it's not that hard. Okay. You just gotta get it so that just the letting. Find the box. Right. Thanks. I take care of everybody's problems on the computer. I make sure they know how to use the computers and the programs and the software. We do our book sales on the computers. We have our writers write the stories on the computers, and then the editors make their layouts. And also, then they put the writer's stories onto the layouts. And then we send the discs to the plant. And they, from that, make our yearbook. I, I think I'm going to have, like, Carolyn read it or somebody yeah. else read it, because I'm just not sure what to do. OK? But that's fine. You, I mean, you did so good, this issue, like, doing both stories and everything. That's really cool. OK. Good job. Cool. As always. <laughs> I'm the editor-in-chief of the school newspaper, The Purple Tide, and um, as editor-in-chief, I'm responsible for overseeing the staff and making sure that everybody does, everybody cooperates and does their part of the work. Um, everybody has a different responsibility on here. They all, they all write stories and collect ads to put in the paper. Um, they work on layout, laying out and designing the pages for the paper and um, I'm in charge of making sure that everything gets, comes together, that it, that it all gets put together well. We, we talk to teachers and, and parents and students, and um, the students come up with their own ideas, and then we pick the best the ones that we think are the most important 
and uh, the most interesting. Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, this is a case of murder. We will prove beyond a reasonable doubt we will show that I was uh, auditioning was for the uh, model, model judiciary program. Um, it is where uh, high, high school students who are in the uh, AP government classes get to go to um, the, the actual circuit court of Fairfax County and try um, try cases that were tried in, in previous times, like, such as this one was tried in 1981. Um, I was auditioning for the part of the uh, defense lawyer. Um, I, I thought it was, this was a great, great opportunity for students to actually get to test out what they've learned and of the whole, whole government idea and the whole you know, ju judicial idea. Um, I, I think this is a great, great idea for this. That it was an accidental discharge of the weapon. Accidental meaning that it could have misfired by the by uh, it falling out of his hand, hitting a, hitting a hard object. If you get up and you do a lot of speaking and you speak persuasively, you will be able to win awards at this conference. Now, awards aren't everything, but it really is fun to win an award. So we are going to pick five countries after I explain parliamentary procedure. And with those five countries, we're just This is out. Model United Nations. And what we do is we sort of reenact what the real United Nations would go through in a crisis situation, whether it's Security Council or ECOSOC, which has to do with economics and the ecosystem. And what we do is we each get a country, each school that participates, and we act like we're that country. We're delegates from that country, actually. And we do bills, we propose, we sponsor, just like the real United Nations, only smaller. We go to competitions that are held by various schools, and we basically reenact the model United Nations. If we do well, we get awards, we get recognition, but basically we just go to have a lot of fun because it is a good time. We have an outstanding music uh, education program, music program here in our choral music, instrumental, uh, in our orchestral, all of those areas, um, especially choral and, and band and jazz band are not only known locally, they're known regionally, statewide, and even nationally. Our touch of class and our choral performance uh, group that is in the top sing singing and performing group that we have. You have the jazz band, which Downbeat Magazine referred to, uh, I believe two years ago, as the finest high school jazz program in the country. Uh, the jazz band that's consistently requested in performance all over the area. The department here in Chantilly, uh, I, I, we, we like to try to think we're as diverse as we possibly can make it. We're truly a fine arts department, not a music and drama department. Uh, we incorporate uh, our art department, uh, photography, drama, and uh, all aspects of our music department in many of our productions. Uh, for instance, we do our, a holiday spectacular, which uh, most of the posters and uh, set designs and what have you are, are done through drama and art students. Um, and the music, of course, is produced by the band and orchestra and the characters of the holiday spectacular are uh, produced uh, through the uh, drama department. We don't expect that every student is going to be a music major, but uh, we do hope that we're building very educated and uh, uh, distinguished future audiences who will like all aspects of music. Um, we believe that good music, whether it be uh, a classical orchestra piece or a jazz number or a rock 
uh, choral rock dance number. Uh, the, the quality of the music is what counts, not, not uh, uh, the uh, particular type of music that you're playing. If you teach it uh, and uh, teach quality within the different styles of uh, music and art, uh, you're going to be teaching the students uh, a distinction between uh, good and bad, so to speak, in, in the uh, arts. He's shining high. Got to put up the grandmaster. Ew, pretty. There you go. <laughs> okay. This is technical theater. Um, we. This is the first year we've had a technical theater course in um, four or five years, and we think it's extremely important. There's only five schools in the county that has this course at this time, but we would like to see all the schools have a technical theater course. There's so much to learn. There is very expensive, very difficult to use equipment, and the productions in Fairfax County are very sophisticated, and the students learn to use the lights and the sound and the makeup and the costumes and the props, and they learn business management and they learn publicity, and the artists uh, design sets. So we're very proud of this class. We hope that it will be a model for other classes in the county. This is the one aspect of theater where people can really get jobs. This is where the jobs are. Yeah, this is the 21st century, and it's a very technical century. And this kind of training interests students in an area where they can use their technical expertise and wind up with a very nice job in the future. Advanced technological systems are not limited to theatrical productions. Every facet of the instructional program at Chantilly has some contact with newer technology. As we view uh, technology here, instructional technology, administrative technology are key components in helping teachers teach, helping improve teachers' teaching, and giving teachers some more instructional aids, instructional opportunities within the classroom and outside of the classroom to help stretch kids, help, help them grow, help them uh, see some different uh, possible paths, different ways to learn, different paths of knowledge. Uh, we have a heavy investment in instructional technology here because we believe it is an extra um, resource for a teacher in that classroom and within that curriculum. And we try to do that in as many areas as possible, in the general ed curriculum, in the special ed curriculum within the, the North Wing Center, especially within the professional technical center where the business and industry contacts are showing that technology is having a massive change in the way business and industry is going about their jobs. Okay, now just rotate it and get the other angle. Just, well, okay, go ahead, rotate it all the way through. Since that's now to the left side, is this going to be positive or negative? It's going to be negative. Okay, and what angle do we have now on this? Technical physics is a course in which instead of studying physics throughout nature, we're studying physics specifically to ways that they're used in, in the human endeavor. We will study energy, work, rates, resistance, uh, power, and force transformations in the first year of the course. There's a second year of the course that studies optics, uh, momentum, radiation, and some of the other modern physics topics. We have the equipment arranged, so we have a drawer of electrical components when we're working with electrical systems, a drawer of mechanical components, for instance, the conveyor belt, the gears, worm screws, to see what sort of mechanical advantages they provide, and then quite a few mechanical devices in our last drawer here. And we have voltmeters and meters, both digital and with uh, dials. We have a good signal generator for our oscilloscopes, and we have a power supply source. We have a drawer with just general measuring devices, scales, uh, calipers, protractors, thermocouples. And uh, just coming down, we have a drawer just for hydronamic stuff, uh, hydraulics, where we're working with liquids, and pneumonics, where we're working with air. And then last, the one that gets the last, is our thermal drawer, 
where we uh, check to see how, how temperature differences affect heat flow through systems. Taking the drudgery out of performing pencil and paper calculations is an area where technology makes learning math more enjoyable and even helps improve comprehension. It's just a reinforcement for the kids, um, learning it by hand first and then being able to discover some things on their own. Um, we've also been able to use them for the statistical um, application where it's really tedious to do it by hand. And, um, you know, we can, we, can, we, can just, we can study some real life applications like the arm, arm span and the height, so, which is what they do in the real world. So it's just been a way for them to discover some concepts and for them to do some real life applications, which makes math worthwhile. We still do things by hand. Many of the concepts are expected to be done by hand. Um, but with one thing we just did a few days ago is absolute value graphs and seeing the vertex move up and down. And what we had them do is use the calculators and discover why is it moving. And then they were better at doing it by hand because they're like, oh, they could look at an equation and say, well, this one, it should be over to the right a little bit. And say, well, my answer should be right now because they're discovering it on their own and it helps them a lot. So it's a tool. It's a whole lot faster and it takes away from a whole lot of the busy work because you don't have to mess with a pencil and paper and you can just go back to it just by pushing a little button and you don't have to draw it and work it all out because it's just doing it for you and you're still understanding it. Okay, those of you who didn't stay with me, let's go back through it one more time. Five. Okay, transfer, and let's draw. Beautiful, isn't it? Libraries have harnessed the power of technology in their transformation from book depository to media center. This is a room that we refer to as the computer reference room. And uh, there are many CD-ROM programs in the room that uh, students use to access up-to-date information in periodicals, in newspapers, and uh, government documents. They also have the internet. The CD-ROM stations are updated monthly, uh, some of them uh, annually, uh, some biannually. Uh, it's important to get information that's up to date, uh, depending upon the type of project, research project that the student is, uh, has at hand. Uh, the internet gives them online capability. Uh, if they need statistical information or a news story, they can access that the moment it's happening. The Professional Technical Center at Chantilly offers a variety of courses to prepare students for the workforce of the next millennium, including culinary arts. Keep your knife in one easy motion. Yes. Is that the joint? The culinary technology program here at Chantilly Professional Technical Center is a practical application class. Students learn hands-on preparing food from scratch for clients, which we do catering. We also feed the faculty. Um, students are preparing for a professional career in the food service industry, such as hotels or restaurants. We try to run the class based on the classical French brigade system. We have a student sous chef who's in charge of the production every week, and the, state, the kitchen is broken down into stations such as saucier, pantry garmage, soups, vegetable starch, uh, stewarding, table service, things like that. The first year students uh, focus mostly on basic skills. The second year students work on table service and management, as well as continue to apply the basic skills they learn during the first year. Many students that go on to college or uh, another degree in another field may find out that they don't have a job in that field. Uh, and they end up living on mom and dad's couch uh, looking for a menial part-time job or full-time job in a fast food restaurant or some other uh, area of the food service industry. The students that leave the culinary technology class have a very strong basic culinary skills that will allow them to climb into the management ranks and to be in charge of those places, hotels, catering companies, and your finer restaurants are what these kids are prepared to work in. Get a plastic container, fill it with ice. We'll put that in there, swirl it around, and if 
fat gets onto the container, it gets hard, and you pull it out. And that gets all the fat off of the sauce. They don't believe it. We do an in-house sanitation report every day, and there's like three or four people on sanitation. They walk around, make sure everyone's hands are clean, their hair's pulled back, their clothes are clean. There's nothing spilled on the ground. They pick everything up. All the dishes are being washed. Each student's supposed to wash their own knives and cutting boards and put them away when they're done. And then um, we have the people on sanitation washing this, the dishes every day. Let's use this. Metal's going to work better than plastic. I've got to see this. I'm going to see how this is going to work. Wouldn't you say that if you put a bowl around you, like the, the cold gets on the back, it holds onto the bowl. So, I want to see this. I'm going to take a while. You look good? Oh my god. Do that a couple of times and you'll have all the fat off your sauce. To be a full service school, everyone's wishes and needs must be considered. The Chantilly Student Government Association helps accomplish that. What Student Government Association is, is the whole student body, um, grades 9 through 12. It is like what you saw today was the third period representing the meeting. Now what that is, is that um, since third period is our constant period with our block scheduling, we have a meeting, that way we know that we'll get every rep. Now what they do is we choose, we go through a whole election process, which we get a rep and an alternate from each third period class. What they do is go to this meeting. In this meeting, we discuss activities coming up, um, what's going on with the school. Like, for instance, last year, we discussed block scheduling. Um, we discussed homecoming prom, any issues in the school. And basically, we, get, we tell them to report back to their classes so every student of the student body knows what's going on, but also for them to report back to the classes, get polls and surveys, and also get feedback to what we're doing and what's going on around and about the school. One of the things I shared at back to school night with parents there was one of my goals is to try to keep a big school small, that we continue those administrative strategies in sub schools and things like that, that try to keep students identified in smaller groupings so that the students feel comfortable with the services being delivered and the parents know that their, their concerns are being heard. That as we go through this process of growth, as we go through this process of refining our educational mission here, as we go through the process of adding technology, while not diminishing our support to the curriculum or extracurriculum, that uh, we're gonna need some patience, we're gonna need some time, um, that we continue to communicate in a very kind manner, and that we try to keep that message as positive as possible as we go through this mission of offering what we believe is to be the best education we can offer to students here in the Chantilly High School boundary. Thank you.